Throughout the history of flight, pilots in the cockpit have had to withstand heavy pressures on their body. The power and turning ability of today's fighters can push forces eight or nine times heavier than gravity through the human frame. Bear down, tighten up, keep them nice and bright. The centrifuge puts a pilot through a similar experience. Under these intense stresses, he must still be able to fly and fight. To assess his ability to do this, he has to fly a computerized course. Keep the lights nice and bright. Release the stick, unload, unload, keep straining, keep straining. Flying today's fighter is undoubtedly one of the most demanding jobs in the world. It imposes intense physical, emotional, and intellectual pressures all at once. And as fighters become more complex, the strains on the pilot increase. Research is going on to find new ways of helping him fly his aircraft. Scientists are studying how a pilot's brain gathers information through his senses. How it builds up a picture of his situation, interprets it, and then makes his decisions. They need to know each stage of the process because their aim is to design a super cockpit that assists the pilot in his tasks, a working partnership between man and machine. Sensors would monitor his brain function and at times of stress, a computer could take control of the aircraft while the man concentrates on the business of combat. The super cockpit will not be a control panel at arm's length, but something the pilot wears a special helmet where he receives all the information he needs to make his combat decisions. It's called the Virtual World Cockpit. Zoom. Zoomed. Normal. Normal. Okay, I've got the uh, Soviet hind on me, firing cannon. God's eye. God's eye. Information is projected, like cinemascope and Technicolor, to the pilot so that the information regarding where the targets are located in the outside world, where the friendly aircraft are located, uh, aircraft state information, Normal. is all projected into this three-dimensional world. And that is then augmented with a uh, three-dimensional sound so that the crew member will, will hear the enemy and the direction that he's coming from. When he talks to his wingman, he will hear the wingman coming from that direction. Okay, I believe I got him. Yeah, when he has a problem with the aircraft, he'll have this little voice that comes in. It's his daughter's voice. And his daughter speaks to him and says, Daddy, you have a fire in your left engine. Normal. Normal. It may seem that uh, it's unusual to have uh, your daughter's voice speak to you in the cockpit, but that's exactly what we're trying to do, is to take something that normally would be out of context and put it into this battle so that we can grab the pilot's attention. Zoom. Zoomed. Normal. Normal. Are you ready to start your run? Uh, okay. The goal is still some way off, but the program has already had some payoffs. This helmet, for example, will help helicopter pilots fly and fight more effectively by day and night. We could look upon the video game culture as an opportunity to raise a new generation of warriors who will be able to live in a world that is largely computer generated. Pilots today are willing to trust their life to machinery that pilots a number of years ago wouldn't even conceive of doing. But what sort of fighter will the pilots of tomorrow fly? One thing is clear, it'll be expensive. Back in World War II, a Mustang cost 33,000 pounds to build. This, the European fighter aircraft, due to come into service in the 90s, will have a price tag of 20 million pounds. That's why it's being built by a consortium of nations. 
And that's why it'll have to perform many roles, from intercepting to ground attack. One aeroplane to carry out the jobs three or four did in World War II. Recent wars have shown how vulnerable fighters are to anti-aircraft missiles. Like the SR-71, still the world's best example of aeronautical stealth, tomorrow's fighters will need a shape to fly undetected by radar and avoid the dangers from the ground. Designers like Lockheed's Ben Rich believe that the fighter of the future will need another capability. We're going to have to worry about the enemy going after our landing fields. We're going to have to worry about how we're going to come home. In other words, if they go and knock out our fields, we need to have airplanes that have vertical landing capabilities. So the next generation will have what we call short takeoff and vertical landing. Already some are questioning the need for manned fighter aircraft at all. As missiles become deadlier, as remote control vehicles develop, they foresee a time when a country can defend its skies without relying on pilots in expensive aeroplanes. The men in the cockpit naturally have a different view. Man and the history of man has never failed to beat a machine. And if something is predictable, I, even on my low level of knowledge, will beat it. I don't care what the scientists say. You need the computer that the dear Lord gave us right between our ears and behind our eyes. It's the best one yet. But with the technology of Star Wars on the horizon, even the most ardent flyer can see a future where the fighter pilot may no longer have a place in the skies. Now once they start using particle beam weapons, when they start using laser technology, then I don't know if I want to put my butt in one of those airplanes or not. You know, if it's Buck Rogers, maybe it's time to put Cylons in there. 